Hey guys, we're back uh, again with another book. Today we've got um, a book about the Tuskegee Airmen. I know uh, we read one about them a few uh, a few books ago, but we've got uh, the Air Force on the car again for uh, this weekend. We're going into Bristol for the night race, so um, going to be a cool race. Obviously, Bristol night race is one of the bigger ones uh, all year. Uh, I love that that race and that track. It's been good to me. I've come really close uh, a few times in the night race to winning and um, just haven't quite sealed the deal. So hopefully this year's the year we can go and knock that race out. You know, it's one of, uh, uh, it's, it's probably my favorite race all year, really. And anytime somebody asks me what race they should go to as a fan, it's really always the one I suggest. It's just the coolest race all year and, and one of the best ones that we do. So um, if you get a chance, check it out. But uh, the book today uh, is called When I Grow Up, I Want to Be Like the Brave Men of Tuskegee. And it's by LaVon Stennis Williams. And it's uh, about a kid learning about the airmen. And so we're going to see what he learned today about the Tuskegee Airmen. Hi, my name is Brandon Dean. And I'm eight years old. I love to read, do science projects, and I really love to do math. I already know all my multiplication tables up to 12. And there he is. Everyone tells me I'm very smart for my age. I think it's because I love to learn new things. I read for 20 minutes every day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. By my math, that's over 100,000 words a year. I can do a lot of things, but I really want to fly. Not like a bird or a butterfly, but like the men my papa told me about called the Tuskegee Airmen. Wow, that's hard to say. The Tuskegee Airmen didn't really fly. They flew planes, and that's what I want to do when I'm older. Sometimes I dream, excuse me, that I am a Tuskegee Airman flying way up in the air. Sometimes I get my airplane out and run around the yard pretending to fly. I have lots of books about planes and pilots. Pilots are the people who fly planes. I think I have more books on planes, pilots, and the Tuskegee Airmen than any other kid in the whole wide world, including my best friend, Kyle Wayne. Someday when he grows up, he wants to go in the Army. We love to pretend we are flying planes just like the Tuskegee Airmen. When I'm not flying planes, I'm usually reading books about planes and pilots with Papa. He's my favorite person to read books with. Papa was the first one who read a book to me about the Tuskegee Airmen. They were African-American men who became pilots and helped our country fight in World War II. They looked just like my Papa, Daddy, my best friend Kyle Wayne, and me. But older. Well, Papa looks older than they do. Papa told me that many people did not think these men could fly because they were African-American. And that never made sense to me. There they are, reading along. Oops. During World War II, President Roosevelt issued Executive Order 8802 in June 1941, directing that African Americans be accepted into job training programs, paving the way for the Tuskegee Airmen to earn their wings and go into battle. Papa said, one day, Brandon, these men, these men were given a chance to learn how to fly and they went to a college in Alabama called Tuskegee. They were smart, just like you, and I bet when, the, when they were your age, they could read and do math and science too. Really, Papa? Could I be a Tuskegee Airman now? I asked. The Tuskegee Airmen came from all over the country to learn how to fly planes. There were 16 men from right where you live in Omaha, Nebraska, and they trained for over seven weeks, Papa said. That's a lot of weeks, Papa. Papa and I learned a lot of things from my books, like the Tuskegee Airmen learned to fly at a field called Moton Field, which was near Tuskegee College. An African-American teacher named Charles Anderson taught them how to fly uh, planes. One day, President Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, came to visit Moton or Moton Field. She wanted to show people that people were wrong about African-Americans not being able to fly. She got in the plane with Charles Anderson, and he flew her from Tuskegee, Alabama, all the way to Mobile, Alabama. She was not afraid. She helped prove to the world that African Americans could fly too. I wish I could have been there. I'd gotten in the plane with them. And there they are. When the men finished their first training at Moton Field, they were sent to another place called Tuskegee Army Airfield. Once they finished at Tuskegee Airfield, they got their wings, which meant they were officially pilots. Papa explained they did not get real wings because people do not have wings. They got a pin on their jacket to prove they were now pilots. They were very brave and ready to help fight in the war. 
Another important Tuskegee Airman, Papa said, I should know, is Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin O. Davis Jr. He was the first African American to be a commanding officer at Tuskegee Airfield, but he did not go to Tuskegee College like the other men. He went to West Point, a very important training school. He's the only African American at West Point, and no one would even talk to him. Lieutenant Colonel Davis was very strict with the Tuskegee Airmen. He wanted them to be the best because the whole wide world was watching them to see if they would be good pilots. The Tuskegee Airmen worked hard and proved that they were great men and pilots were very important in the fight against our enemies during the war. And there is the Lieutenant Colonel. I knew I wanted to be a Tuskegee Airman too, but Papa said I couldn't be one because they graduated their last class a long time ago and the program has ended. Papa said I could still be a pilot and fly like the Airmen. Even before the Tuskegee Airmen program started, African men, American men and women were learning how to fly, and some even had their own schools to teach other African Americans how to fly. James Banning was the first African American aviator to earn a pilot's license. He was born in 1899 and went to college in Iowa majoring in engineering. When he first tried to enroll in a pilot's training program, he was not allowed to enroll because of his race. But eventually, he was allowed to enroll in a U.S. Army pilot program. In 1929, he received his pilot's license from the U.S. Department of Commerce. Bessie Coleman was the first African-American woman in the world to earn a, a pilot's license. Flight schools in the United States would not let her apply because of her race. So she taught herself how to speak French and moved to France to enroll in flight school there. She earned her license from a well-known school of aviation in just seven months. Willa Beatrice Brown was an American aviator. She was the first African-American woman to earn her pilot's license in the United States. She was also the first African-American officer in the U.S. Civil Air Patrol and the first woman in the United States to have both a pilot's license and a mechanic's license. Along with Cornelius Coffey, she founded the Cornelius Coffey School of Aeronautics which was the first private tr flight training academy in the United States owned and operated by African Americans. She trained hundreds of pilots, several of whom who would go on to become Tuskegee Airmen. And there she is. The stories of the African American aviators who lived long before me prove that I can become a pilot when I grow up too. And there you go. That's the end. So. Uh, a pretty cool book, uh, you know, about the Tuskegee Airmen and some good facts about the men and women who uh, made it made it work and made a big difference in the world. It, it is a really cool story that um, I've learned so much about this year, you know, with the uh, Air Force being on the car uh, and us running the, the paint scheme to honor uh, the Tuskegee Airmen. It's been it's been cool to learn uh, more about it and, and read about it. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and make sure to hashtag read with Eric and give me some book suggestions and we'll make sure that we get down um, to those books and get them read and, and uh, have some fun with it. So uh, tune into Bristol this weekend, Saturday night. Should be a lot of fun and hopefully see us going for the win.